24 hours and plenty of maneuvering, Gary Sheffield waived his no-trade clause, and the Dodgers acquired Sheffield, Charles Johnson, Bobby Bonilla, Jim Eisenreich, and Manuel Barrios from the Marlins for Mike Piazza and Todd Zeal in one of the biggest trades in baseball history. Sheffield, a three-time All-Star, though, should help the Dodgers' rather anemic offense, which ranks 13th in the National League in batting at 248. The new look Dodgers hosting uh, the Expos. It is Bobby Bonilla well, starting at third. Gary Sheffield in right. And guess who's behind the plate? Charles the Johnson. Picture. Bottom of three now. One nothing so Expos. Strong. Sheffield up with a man on. And Sheffield pays dividends immediately with a single to left. That will drive home Darren Dreifert. Sheffield two for four. And we are tied at one. Not in time. Bottom of five now. Sheffield at the plate again. And. Again, laces one to the corner and left, but Ryan McGuire on the run. Great diving catch as Sheffield gets robbed on that one. He can't believe it. Bottom of six still tied at one. Bobby Bonilla takes Javier Vasquez deep to right. Gone. Bonilla's fifth home run of the year. Bonilla one for four with two RBI. It's 2-1 Dodgers. Four batters later. Charles Johnson delivers a long single to right. That drives in Eric Carroll and Todd Hollinsworth. Johnson one for three with an RBI. Part of an eight-run Dodger sixth, and Fred Clare watches his new additions pay off. As the Dodgers won for just the fourth time in 13 games, Darren Dreifert went six and two-third innings. And cards Mike Piazza taking batting practice, but he did not start Saturday night. We go back to May 12th. Mark McGuire hits the longest home run ever in Bush Stadium, 527 feet. He can go deep. And now we go back to Saturday night's game, and it's the bottom of the fourth. Marlins up 3-1. Levon Hernandez pitching, and McGuire... Unloads and breaks his own record. That is 545 feet, a new record, the longest home run now at Bush Stadium. Look where that one ends up. His 16th of the year ties him for the Major League League with Vinny Castilla. Marlins up 3-2, though. Top of the seventh now, Mike Piazza up to pinch hit for Levon Hernandez with runners on the corners, and Piazza hits it to straightaway center. It's a sacrifice fly, and that ties the score at four. Bottom of seven now, same score when Brian Jordan dials long distance. A solo blast, and he was two for four with an RBI, his seventh home run of the season. And so the Marlins now have lost six of their last seven games, and as you see, Manager Jim Riggleman hoping to snap the Reds' three-game winning streak. Uh, bottom of the second, Brett Boone, as you can see on first. Reggie Sanders with the ground ball to Kevin Ory. He throws to Manny Alexander at second, but you know what? He drops the ball. But second base umpire Jerry Crawford calls Boone out. Jack McKeon does not agree, and look at him. He gets tossed. His first ejection in 105 games as the Reds' manager, and he got his money's worth on that one. Top of the third, Cubs up 1-0. Two men on for Sammy Sosa. Gone. Drills his eighth home run of the year off of Scott Sullivan, his only hit of the day. He had three RBIs. The Cubs go on to win. Mark Clark won his first game since April 6th as the right hand. Saturday. Well, here's Mark Witten, bottom of the first. Base is loaded. Witten delivers off Bobby Witt, Kenny Lofton, and Omar Vizquel score. 2 nothing. Tried. The very next batter, Brian Giles. He hit the game winning home run Friday night. His very next at bat. Same result. A three run shot off Witt. 5 0 Indians. Giles, 10th of the season. Indians cruising up 8-2, bottom of the seventh, when Witten goes the other way. Solo shot his first homer of the season, makes it 9-3 Indians. They add another one to win it 10-3. Witten homered and drove in four runs in his second start since he's seen the Twins. Ramiro Mendoza in control. Chris Latham grounds to Chuck Knobloch here in the sixth, and Knobloch tosses him out. Next batter, Todd Walker. His shot deflected by Mendoza. Right to Scott Brocious, the bare hand grab and throw. And the next batter, Pat Mears. Up the middle, Derek Jeter this time. Mendoza, eight innings, four hits, one earned run. Bottom of the six, Yankees up 3-1. Bases loaded. Jeter singles to left. Jorge Posada, Scott Brocious scored. Jeter now hitting 338. The Yankees going to win it 5-2. Jeter tying his career high with four hits, extending his hitting. And then he puts it into... Application, bottom of the third, Vaughn, solo home run to right is 11th of the year. The chat with Rice must have worked. It's 3 0 Sox. Steve Field Avery, two, two on, two out on the fifth, trying to escape. He does. Jose Offerman strikes out. Top of the seventh, Rich Garces now on the hill in relief. Mike Sweeney, robbed by Lou Merloni. Take another look. Merloni playing in place of the injured John Valentin. They're saying Lou at Fenway for the Framingham, Massachusetts native. Even Nomar likes the look of it. The Red Sox win it. Avery, who was 0-2 in three recent starts with... Early day in San Francisco as the Mets watching the game wearing sunglasses. They might need them a little later. Here's why. Third baseman Jim Tatum tries to field a Daryl Hamilton pop-up. 
blinded by the sun. Next pitch, he tries to make up for it. This time, Tatum and Ray Ordonez can't catch it, neither wearing sunglasses. So it's the third time a charm. Tatum makes the catch, but just barely as Bobby Valentine turns his back on the play. Didn't want to watch as Tatum explains to Valentine his problem, and Valentine is not interested. Says maybe you should have had some sunglasses on. Top of the third now. Mets up 3-0. Kirk Reeder facing Alberto Castillo. Castillo goes deep to left. His first major league home run. And first one in 152 at bats. So he has now hit safely in nine of his last 12 games. And then how about this? During the game, the Geneva Towers were imploded. Damn, you talk about a distraction during the game. Bottom of six now. 4-0 Mets and Rick Reed pitching well, facing Alex Diaz. Diaz grounds up the middle, but look at Ordonez make the sparkling play. And he gets the out. Bottom of eight now. Mets up 4-1. Jeff Kent flies out to Brian McRae, but look at McRae right there. Flashes an obscene gesture. He was inserted as a pinch hitter as Valentine watches, and Rick Reed has a personal three-game winning streak. Is looking for his fourth straight win. There he is. Top of the third. Chipper Jones takes a Shane Reynolds pitch deep to center field. That's his 13th of the year. He was two for four. And Chipper now hitting 331. It's one nothing Braves. Top four now. Braves doing the little things. Men at the corners and the squeeze play is on. Maddox lays it down. Michael Tucker scores. Hey, you know what? Maddox was two for two and it's two nothing Braves. Bottom of five now, man on second. Derek Bell, who was 0 for 4, bounces to Walt Weiss at short. One hops the throw to first. Brad Osmus will score on the error. 2-1 Braves, and that ends the Braves' 17-game errorless streak. 2-2 in the bottom of the ninth. Kerry Leitenberg facing Craig Biggio. Goodbye. Fifth of the year at your game winner. Biggio is 2 for 5. As the Astros break the Braves' seven-game winning streak, and Biggio gets congratulated as the Astros thrill the largest... In the lineup, bottom of six, 2-1 two fills, 2-on-2 two two out, Ruben Rivera's rocket is snagged by Desi Relaford. A great catch there, still 2-1, bottom of nine now. Pinch hitter Ed Giovanola. Bunts, Mark Leiter's throw here is in the dirt. Ruben Rivera, who was just called up from AAA earlier in the day, scores, tied at two, and Leiter making it tough on himself. Greg Myers now comes up with the bases loaded, nobody out, and Myers... Serves one to left over the drawn-in outfield, and Chris Gomez will trot home with your game-winning run. As the Pods win their fourth straight, they rally in the ninth to beat the Phillies. Carlos Reyes. Roof open. That's Juan Guzman taking the hill. Facing Alex Rodriguez in the first, and A-Rod greets him rudely. Jose Canseco leaps, and he doesn't make the catch. Number 14 for A-Rod. Second off Guzman in six days. Mariners defense all over the place. Dan Wilson with the nice sliding catch. He knocks over the Gatorade. Then in the outfield, Kevin Brown pops to right. Ryan Radmanovich, a Canadian, breaks his countryman's heart by making that catch. Still in the fourth. One nothing down the bottom of the fourth. One nothing M's. Jays with two men on. Stan Williams, a pitching coach, tells Jeff Pacero to strike out Ed Sprague, which he does, and then he strikes out Jose Cruz Jr. Jays managed only five hits and one run against Pacero in eight and a third. And it's overcast, so they're going to close the roof in Toronto. Doesn't matter a bit to A-Rod. One home run with the roof open, one with the close. This one in the eighth. Off Kelvin Escobar, two home runs for A-Rod. Jeff Vicero allowed only five hits in his stint. He's given up here in a jam. Fourth inning, 2-1 Tampa. Two on Cal Ripken. Take a seat. Living on the Top of the fifth, 4-1. Devil Rays. Bases jam for John Flaherty. And Scott Erickson grabs the ball as it comes at his head. Boy, that flashback to what happened to Mike Messina the other day, but that's a double play. Bottom of the seventh, five on Tampa. Eric Davis launches one to left off Esteban Yan, who used to be in the Oriole organization. Davis is eighth of the season. Club record 18th straight game with a homer for the Orioles. They're down 5-2. Same score in the eighth. Two guys on. Rafael Palmero gets struck out by Jim Messier. Palmero throws his bat in disgust. The Orioles lose it again. Baltimore's lost four or five. They're below five. Diamondbacks, top of the second now. Pirates up 2-1. Runners on first and second when Manny Martinez hits the three-run blast off of Brian Anderson. The first career home run for Martinez. He was three for five with three RBI. The Pirates up 5-1. Next batter, could it be Jason Kendall? Back-to-back -back jacks. Fourth of the season for Kendall. He was two for five. He's now hitting 340. And Anderson has now given up 13 home runs on the season, 11 of them to right-handed batters as Jason Schmidt won his fifth straight decision. Back to baseball, Brewers and Rockies. Top of the first, two on for Jeff Jenkins. It's one nothing Brewers. Kevin Ritz has pitched to Jenkins, taken deep to right for his fifth home run of the year, a three-run shot. 
He was two for four with four RBI. Four nothing Brew Crew. Bottom of eight now. Rockies trail with two on. Kurt Mann wearing lines to center. Defensive replacement Darren Jackson misplays it here. Sails over his head. Two runs will score. And Manwaring with a triple. He was two for four with two RBI. It's now 7 5. Rockies down. Bottom of ninth now. Same score. Tying run at the plate. But Doug Jones gets Vinny Castilla to strike out swinging. Castilla was 0 for 4. And the Rockies have now lost six straight games. They're now a major league worst. Four. Three game winning streak. Hosting Anaheim. Six inning angels up 6 5. Frank Catalanata at bat. And Jim Edmonds makes the catch. To end the inning, let's watch the replay. The ball never touches the ground. Edmonds is an angel. Eighth inning, Edmonds facing Sean Runyon, and Edmonds can do it at the plate. High drive to right that Bobby Higginson catches at the wall. Controversy upcoming, no video to show up, but umpire Larry Burnett said that it was a home run, ruling that he heard the ball nick the sign directly under the upper deck. Overhang, everybody argued. Higginson and Buddy Bell were ejected. The Angels.